Hey everybody, in one of our last videos we were reviewing the latest features released in version 2.1 for the ASI Air and that went live on public release this week so head over to the App Store and check this out if you missed the news and if you missed the version 2.1 update video then do go and watch it as it contains exciting news if you own certain models of Sony mirrorless camera. Yep, you can now use these on the ASI Air but to connect your Sony camera does require a few changes on the camera settings and depending on what model you have you might need to go hunting in the menu as in typical Sony style some of these are linked to each other. So let's dig into the details and see what you should look to change to run your mirrorless camera on the ASI Air and also check out some of my other menu suggestions when using your camera. Hey everybody, my name's Simon and welcome to AstroWorks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, full of hints and tips on how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. The ASI Air series of mini astro computers is definitely top of my list for newcomer recommended equipment. One of the great things about them is the frequent updates to the platform, bringing new features on a regular basis. Now, ZWO have just released the latest update to the little mini computer, and version 2.1 is now out in full production. You can check out the ZWO ASI Air Facebook page to stay up to date with all the release information. Now, regular updates to the ASI Air are nothing new, and in fact, it's one of the things that makes it stand out from other imaging platforms. But version 2.1 brings something that's been requested for some time, and that is Sony mirrorless camera support, which I know will please a lot of Sony ASI Air owners. So first, let's remind ourselves what models are supported as some models were added just on release. Currently supported and tested are the A7, the smaller A7C, the full frame A7 series models, specifically the A7 II, the A7 III and the A7 IV. The R series cameras being the A7R, the R2, the R3 and the R3A. The A7R4 and the R4A. For the S series, the A7S, A7S2, A7S3 are supported. And in the smaller APS-C series, the A5000, the A6000, 6100, 6400, 6500 and the 6600 are all supported. Also on the list is the little APS-C size ZVE-10. Now I've successfully tested my A7 III and the ZVE-10 and it's really nice to see these fabulous cameras coming to the ASI Air. There are some specific camera settings required for these Sonys so let's take a look in more detail as they're a little bit more complex depending on what model you're using. Firstly you will need to use bulb mode. Now, Sony cameras are different in the way you reach this. The A7 III, for example, uses the top mode dial to reach manual mode, and then you turn the rear dial clockwise until you find bulb mode. This is the same on the A6000 series, as well as many others of that top mode dial. This is a fairly typical setting for Sony, but do check on your camera how to reach bulb mode. Now, on the ZV-E10, you will need to press the Still Movie S and Q button on the top panel to get to still mode. The next step would be then to rotate the control wheel in the same way as before. But if you're like me and you're using the default settings, then bulb mode won't be available. Some menu items will stop it allowed to be selected, so we need to change these before it will appear in the menu item. Those menu items needing changed are Auto HDR, which should be set to off, Picture Effect, which should not be set to HDR painting or rich tone mode, and drive mode should not be set to continuous shooting or self timer continuous. You're also enabled to use silent shooting mode on the ZV-E10 and any of these will stop you being able to choose bulb mode on this camera. So that's one to watch out for, it can make life a little confusing. And I highly recommend you check your camera manual before heading out to ensure there's no unusual menu items that stop you selecting bulb mode. Next on the list of checks is the image quality and you must select the highest level possible, so choose RAW only. Don't select RAW and JPEG as this will fail when it comes to downloading an image. Ensure your lens is in manual focus mode and you'll also want to choose the menu settings so that you can do a shutter release with no lens present 
particularly if you want to use a telescope adapter. The menu item will be called something release without lens. Next on our list is to ensure that the USB mode is set to PC remote. And in the case of the ZVE10, you need to turn off the smartphone connect functions too. Again, as before, do check your manual as different cameras call these features by different names. But basically, you want the USB to recognize it's connected to a USB and not a smartphone. And having this enabled can stop the PC mode function. Some older cameras may also need the USB lens setting changed. Uh, the USB lens setting is the number of connections the USB port can handle and older cameras seem to have an issue with USB connections of set higher than one. Connecting to AIC Air is pretty easy now. If your camera came with a USB cable, then use this. It should be a USB-A type and plug that into a USB 3 socket on the Pro and Plus series. For the mini series, you can choose any free USB port. On my A7 III and the ZVE10, I chose the USB-C port for maximum transfer speed. And on some cameras, you'll need to use the USB multi-cable that came with the camera. On some cameras, you can use either. Confused yet? On some cameras, don't forget you need to change your USB LUN setting, as that limits the amount of USB connections that can be made to the camera. Those older cameras seem to need this, so if you can't connect properly, this is worth trying. My ZVE10 and A7 were fine in default multi-connection LUN settings, but I did see some feedback that older cameras seem to like that single LUN setting. Now with the ASI Air booted, you can go to the main camera page on the app and choose the camera scene in the main camera tab and move the connect slider sideways to connect. If all is well, you'll see the camera connected. The Sony camera works in the same way as any normal camera with the addition that you can change the ISO from the main camera controls. The binning control also remains functional. And you can change the exposure from the drop down as normal and click the exposure button to operate the capture feature. Please note there's no mirror lockup feature on the Sony series and then some cameras won't like silent shutter mode. Still a few more key settings to think about. If you like today's video, then do give like the like button a thumb. And if you want to see more of this kind of material, then please do subscribe. We can notify you then as soon as we publish new content. So on with the settings to check. A worthwhile tip on the menu is to find the function to turn off the rear display and if fitted an electronic viewfinder. In the A7 series, you need to find the settings in the menu called Find a Monitor. Here you can turn these off and then save some for the battery power. As with the other camera models, please check your specific camera model and manuals to find those settings. Some cameras like the ZVE10, for example, don't have an EVF, so you can skip that bit. You should now be able to control your camera from within ASI Air and enjoy shooting the night sky with the all new Sony mirrorless camera support. I hope you like this video and I hope it helped you set your camera inside ASI Air 2.1. If you do run into issues, firstly reset the camera to its default state and reapply these settings. If you still encounter issues, you can ask on the ZWO ASI Air Facebook page and you're also welcome to log a ticket on the ZWO support line. You can find details of that on the ZWO website. As always, until next time, we wish you clear skies. Regards from New Zealand. <laughs>